Hi, today we're going to be making a potions cabinet. I don't know if anybody's ever read any books about a boy wizard called Harry Potter or maybe seen some films, but today we're going to be making our own potions cupboard, like the one that might have been used by Professor Snape. So let's get started. This is our potions cabinet and it's actually a real cupboard. I thought I'd show you it because the outside is covered in runes and magical symbols and the inside has got lots of really inspiring things. I'm going to open it now and show you what's inside. You see, we're going to be drawing all of these things, but I thought it'd be fun to have a look at them. We've got pots and potions, we've got bags, we've got fancy different kinds of jars. I think I can see a little bony hand there and a goblet and some quite interesting different shapes of bottles, which I'll show you. And the sort of thing that you might find in a wizard's house, a skull. Okay. So let's get going with the drawing part. Use your imagination to really think about what might be in a witch's or a wizard's cupboard. There might be a crystal ball or an elf's ear, all kinds of magical dusts and powders. If you want, you can arrange your own little still life by collecting bottles and jars from around the house and putting them in a line. Or you could just use your imagination. I'm gonna show you the drawing that I made of a cupboard is just here. This cupboard was made by someone a little bit younger. They used black paper and they made a lovely little keyhole. Can you see the keyhole? And they made their cupboard quite simply. They put some lines of black tape which are a little bit shiny and then they just they just drew their bottles and coloured them in and they had a lovely bit of pattern at the bottom as well. But if you're a little bit older, you might want to make yours a bit more complicated. So I put my paper portrait, which is upright, and I drew some lines with a ruler. And then I just enjoyed the different shapes of bottles that I made. And as you can see, this one's got elf toes in it, eyeballs. I don't know whose hair this is, maybe witch's hair. I put in a crystal ball, a little bag of magic shells or coins, I'm not quite sure which. And up at the top I've also got some fairy's wings. I didn't finish colouring it all in. It's quite fun to think of how you can make your colours stand out by maybe putting yellow and green together to make a kind of toxic, poisonous colour. Try and work, together, work your colours together so that you're not just colouring in but making a different colour at the same time. So that's the inside of the cupboard and you can spend quite a long time with that. Now I'm going to show you the outside. So the last phase is making it into a cupboard, which you do by gluing very, a very thin line of glue and then sticking that down so that you've got a cupboard. So you can glue it on the top piece of paper, that's easier. Just try not to lose too much of your picture and also try and do it the right way around. And I just started, I've drawn what I think of as a spooky nameplate. And you can see I've started drawing a few runes. Now it looks good with brown or black paper, but if you don't have that, it doesn't matter. And if you do, then you'd have to use a lighter crayon, obviously. Here are some runes that I printed out. They're Anglo-Saxon and Viking symbols for letters, which I think work really well as ma to make magic words. So you can enjoy making some magic words. You could even write your own name if you wanted. And here is the cupboard again, the whole thing, so you can feel inspired again. And another thing that you might want to add is, if you've got a stick or a chopstick, you might want to make a wand. And if you make a wand, then you can decorate it, and then you can have a really good game of witches and wizards. I hope you have fun. Bye.